What's up everybody, how's it going? So a lot of you seemed to really enjoy my last video where I shared the story of the best decision that I've ever made, learning how to code, and so I figured that I would make a similar video, this time sharing the story of how I landed my very first software engineering job, my job at Google. Now for those of you who've been watching me for a little while, you might remember that about nine months ago I made a video detailing exactly how I landed my interviews at Google. If you haven't seen that video, I'd encourage you to go check it out, I'll put the link in the comments below, but this is not what I'm going to be talking about in this video. In this video, I'm going to be talking about the rest of the entire job application process. All of the other companies that I applied to, what happened with them, what happened during the couple of months after my Google interviews, all of that stuff. And the reason I want to share this story with you is because I'm hoping that some of you will be able to relate to it, and maybe it'll serve as motivation or inspiration for you, or at the very least, it'll serve as a single data point that you can use as you go through your own job process, especially if you're looking for your very first software engineering job. But so this is an untold story, and with that, sit back, relax, scratch the like button until it turns blue, and enjoy story time with your absolute favorite ex-Google software engineer. So, May 2016, graduated from college. Couple of months later, went to a coding boot camp. Mid-December 2016, graduated from my coding boot camp, and this is when my job application process started. The first thing that I did in mid-December 2016, when I had just graduated from the coding boot camp, is apply to a company called Replit, or REPL.IT. You might actually know it, it's an online sort of code editor that I had used a lot, especially when I was doing my own little algo problems during my coding boot camp, and I really loved their product. I saw that they were hiring, they had open positions, so I sent them an email, I wasn't expecting much, and to my surprise, they actually emailed me back, they gave me a coding challenge, I had to build some sort of prototype feature for them, and then they actually invited me for an on-site interview. They flew me out within a week of my first email in late December to California for a couple of days of on-site interviews. And I remember it was a very exciting time, I was super pumped, I was like, whoa, the first job that I applied to, I get an on-site interview, I get flown out, all expenses paid, this is super cool, this is what it means to be a software engineer, and I enjoyed my time with them, they were a very small startup, but unfortunately they ended up not giving me an offer. Now to be honest, in hindsight, I totally get why they didn't give me an offer, this was a very, very small company. They were only three people at the time, so smaller than us on AlgoExpert. By the way, if you're preparing for your coding interviews, check out my company, AlgoExpert. Go to AlgoExpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C -L -E -M, for a discount on the platform. So I totally understand why they didn't give me an offer. They were really looking for someone who could hit the ground running really fast, who could really pump features out really quickly, and that just wasn't me at the time. That would have been me right now, but not me back then when I had absolutely no software engineering experience. Now as a quick side note, and I'm going to get a little philosophical here, but it is so insanely weird for me to think of how different of a path life can take you on for reasons that are completely beyond your control. Like here if this company, Replit, had given me an offer three and a half years ago, I would have accepted that offer. Even if it hadn't been a great offer, not a great salary, I don't know what it would have been, but even if it hadn't been good, I would have accepted that offer, I would have flown right then and there back to California, and I would have worked for them, I would have likely never launched Algo Expert, because I don't think I would have gotten the idea for Algo Expert since I prepped for my Google coding interviews after that process with that company Replit, and so it's just so weird to think how different my life might have been. But so okay, I got back to New York in late December, and I remember telling myself, okay, it's the end of the year, it's the holidays, most companies aren't really hiring right now, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to focus on myself, I'm going to make my resume really, really good, I'm going to do another project, that's when I did my sorting visualizer project for all of those who've seen that project of mine, and I'll really start the job application process at the beginning of the new year in early 2017. So that's what I did, and then at the beginning of January, I started applying to companies. Now my strategy at the beginning was to focus on companies that I was really interested in, specifically companies whose products I enjoyed. So I was really interested in Robinhood, the mobile stock brokerage app, because I really loved that product and I could see myself working there. I was interested in Blizzard Entertainment because I've always loved Blizzard video games, and I was like, yeah, that would be 
really cool to work there. Those were some of the companies that I was eyeing, and I figured that I would look at companies with which I had connections. So for example, I had met a couple of recruiters at certain companies during a career fair at the very end of my coding bootcamp, so I pursued those companies since I already had sort of an in, and I also was able to get a referral from my co-founder on Algo Experts, then girlfriend, who worked at Lyft, and I was able to get interviews at Lyft, the ride-sharing company. Now by mid-January, reality started to set in, and I started realizing that I was maybe going to have to change my strategy. None of the companies whose products I was super interested in, like Robinhood or Blizzard Entertainment, had responded to me. Then of the companies with which I had connections, some of them just fell through, I didn't even get interviews. Two of them went to final on-site interviews, one of them was kind of a finance company, and the other one was some sort of ad tech company, and I just didn't get offers. I went to the final onset interviews. The interviews were a little bit weird. They weren't really your typical coding interviews, like the problems that we have on Algo Expert. They were kind of different, and even though I thought that I did pretty well, I just didn't get offers, which was a bit disappointing. It was kind of like I didn't really know why I got rejected. And then the most disappointing thing of all was my interviews with Lyft. I remember I had two phone interviews with them. The first one went fine, I did well, and I went on to the next round, the second phone interview, but for the second phone interview, as I've previously said on this channel, I completely failed it. I was not prepared for coding interviews. These were your classic algo expert problems. I was absolutely not prepared. I had been too confident in my own abilities, thinking that the coding puzzles I had been doing on the side during the coding boot camp would suffice. No, they did not suffice, and I realized after getting rejected from Lyft that damn, especially because I'm not actually hearing back from that many companies, I really need to be more prepared and treat the few opportunities that I do get very seriously. And I remember that was sort of the switching point because this is where things started to get really shitty for me, because at that point in mid-January, I had no more interviews lined up, and I started just applying to a ton ton of companies. I kid you not, I applied to over 200 companies. I sent over 200 applications, and I remember I even have a folder right now with like 80 companies for which I wrote actual cover letters. Like I had a cover letter template, I switched the names, I even made them a little bit custom for each company. You know, I had a little paragraph where I tried to plop in something about the company. All of those went nowhere. It was absolutely brutalizing the process. 200 plus online applications, the grand majority of which ended up in rejections. And for the rejections, I like to categorize them in two different kinds of rejections. There are the silent rejections. Those are the companies that you just never hear back from, and those really were the grand majority of them, which really just sucks. You know, you spend hours working on an online application, you answer questions, you're feeling confident, you want to prove yourself in an interview, and you just don't hear back. And then, of all of the other companies, for the majority of them, you do hear back, but it's some sort of automated email that just rejects you. An automated email that tells you, hey Clement, we appreciated your application, but there were tons of other candidates and some of them were a better fit for us. And so I remember finding myself at the very end of January 2017 feeling extremely discouraged. So much time spent on online applications, so many awesome companies that I had been excited about that I thought, oh, I might work there one day, just flat out rejected or just never hearing back from them. And I started thinking, like, am I even going to get the chance to prove myself? Like, is this it? Now, I tried my best to keep my head high and to continue applying to companies, to continue trying to look for opportunities, but it was very demoralizing. Now, fortunately, in early February 2017, that's when I was given two sort of golden eggs. Two golden eggs fell on my lap. One of them was Two Sigma, which is a hedge fund that's very tech heavy, and the other one was Google. For Two Sigma, I was able to get the interview process started through a referral that I got through Full Stack. There was a former instructor at Full Stack who worked at Two Sigma, and I was able to get a referral through him. But I still had to go through the entire interview process at an online coding challenge, a technical phone interview, the on site interviews. So I still had to go through the entire process. For Google, on the other hand, I take a lot of pride in the fact that I didn't get 
any help from anybody. I got the interviews at Google purely by myself. I found a recruiter's email on LinkedIn, contacted them, and got the process started like that. If you want more details, go check out the video that I mentioned at the beginning. But so then I spent 10 days doing almost exclusively just coding interview prep, preparing for the Google and Two Sigma interviews. At the same time, I was still applying to a few other companies, or at least finishing off a few applications that were ongoing with previous companies. I was still getting basically no luck with other companies, just automatic rejections. There was one company with which I got a coding interview on the phone, went well. They invited me for on-site interviews in California. They were going to fly me out. But then at the last minute, they canceled on me. And I was absolutely infuriated, I remember. This was like during my Google coding interview prep that this company canceled on me. And I was just so mad. It was so frustrating. It was for no reason, or at least they didn't give me a reason. But that was just yet another thing that made this entire job application process brutal. Anyway, then I had my on-site interviews at Google and Two Sigma. Three days after my on-site interviews at Google, I got my hire decision from them, which was an absolutely amazing feeling. With Two Sigma a couple weeks later, I got rejected, which sucked, especially because the coding interviews at Two Sigma felt like they had gone way better than even the Google coding interviews. But the systems design that they gave me at Two Sigma, I just completely bombed. I was not prepared for that at the time. Now I would be. But either way, at this point, you would think that I was done. I had gotten my hire decision from Google, the job process was over, I was happy, everything was great. Not quite. In fact, not at all. See, the way that the Google interview process works, or at least the way that it worked back in 2017, is that after you get your hire decision that your recruiter tells you about, you know, they tell you, hey, the hiring committee wants to hire you. You're effectively hired, except not quite. After they tell you that, you have to go through what's called the team matching process, where you have to find a team that basically wants you to join them. Now, normally, this is a relatively quick process process, maybe one to two weeks. Now, for whatever reason, for me, that process took two months. I kid you not, it took two months. I only received my actual offer letter on April 1st or April 2nd, 2017. And those two months were absolutely grueling. The first couple of weeks, I thought it was fine. I thought that everything was normal. That's when I started Algo Expert in end of February, 2017, we started Algo Expert. But slowly but surely, the days went by. I didn't get a team matching call. My recruiter was telling me stuff about some sort of partial hiring freeze and how it might take a little bit longer. And I was getting more and more stressed. And eventually in March, I realized I might not be getting this job, even though I fucking passed the onsite interviews. And that was just brutal. And so I remember I had to basically shift gears back to job application mode. And I started reapplying to jobs. And it was once again, just brutal, like automatic rejection after automatic rejection, companies just not giving you a shot. It got to a point where I wanted to tell companies, I have a hire a decision from Google. Let me interview with you to prove myself. I was able to pass the Google coding interviews, so I'll probably be able to pass your interviews. This goes to show you, by the way, that the whole job application process, especially when you're looking for your very first software engineering job, is kind of broken. Companies have no way of properly assessing you on paper from your resume to determine whether or not you're worth bringing to on-site interviews. Anyway, I digress, but yeah, it sucks. By the end of March, I had gotten two other companies that had finally reached out to me and I did their interview process. I got to the final stage with them. One of them was actually in Europe, in Luxembourg. They looked like a cool startup, but it kind of sucked to shift my mentality so much to think like, oh, I thought I was going to go to Google, but now maybe I'm going to have to go like to Europe, which is not something that was on my radar. And so it was kind of like mentally just like a tough time. But then finally, on April 1st or April 2nd, I got my offer letter from Google. And I remember that was like probably the, the, the happiest day of my life, or at least the most relief filled day of my life. And then I ended up just canceling the interview process with those two companies that I had been talking to. But so all in all, I think that there are three very important lessons that we can extract from this grueling job search process that I went through. The first one is that you should really not 
tie your self-worth to the job search process, especially the very first job search process for software engineering jobs, but to be honest, any job search process. Because as you can see, it's kind of a crapshoot, and just because one company or two companies or a hundred companies reject you doesn't mean that you're not worth anything. Clearly, for all those hundreds of companies that effectively rejected me, Google accepted me. And Google is arguably the hardest one to get into. And it's not like Google made a mistake hiring me or something, or at least I hope not. But I mean, I performed super well at Google, I got promoted very fast, so clearly it was just some sort of issue in the whole job search process. So don't tie your self-worth to this process. That's lesson number one. Lesson number two is that all it takes out of hundreds of applications, hundreds of opportunities, is for one to be positive. You can have 10 rejections, you can have 100 rejections, 200 rejections. If you have one acceptance, that single acceptance can basically make all of those rejections mean nothing. So don't focus on those rejections, focus on the singular most important topic, the one acceptance. And here the law of large numbers is gonna be your friend. And then the third lesson to extract from all of this is that oftentimes failures and rejections end up being blessings in disguise. Take that company Replit, for example, with me. If Replit had offered me a job, if Replit hadn't rejected me, which at the time seemed like a bad thing, the fact that they rejected me, I would have never gone to Google, and I think that my experience at Google was invaluable. I likely would have never found an algo expert for the reasons that I mentioned before. And so all that to say that this rejection from Replit ended up being a blessing in disguise. Of course, that's not to say that every single failure and rejection is going to be some sort of ominous blessing, but it can be. On that note, I really hope that you enjoyed this story. I hope that you could relate to it. I hope that you could take something out of it. And with that, if you did enjoy the story, be sure to smash the like button if you haven't already. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will see you in the next video.